Santa has been cooking and here's what I want him to drop off over Christmas for Derby County. In the next section of videos, we're going to be looking at some players who I believe Derby County could make a move for over the course of the next six to eight months. Obviously, the January transfer window is closing in on us and we all know the need for a striker. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at three strikers who I think Derby County could pick up over the course of that time period. Obviously, when we're looking at this, obviously, there's no official links right now to any of these players. I will be waiting for those and when they do come, player profiles will come as followed. I've picked three different players, a player from a Premier League club, a young player who has the potential to go on to great things and a player who some Derby County fans may know well. Now if you have not done so already make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and turn on that notification bell to stay tuned for all of my latest Derby County and gaming content coming to the channel. Obviously gaming videos first thing every morning. Live streams are going to potentially be heading your way. Obviously, check out the community tab. There's a poll over there to decide whether we do a recorded post-match reaction to Leeds United or a live one. So let me know what you think down in that. But shall we get into looking at these players on my Christmas wish list? Well, here we are then. As you will have seen on the thumbnail, these are the three players. You may know them, you may not. On the left-hand side, we have Emil Rees Jakobsen. Through the middle, we have Emre Tejel. And on the right, we have Ali Alhamdi, a player who I've spoke about a lot across the course of the last few months after his links to Derby County within the summer window. But shall we take a little bit of a deeper look into these players? Now, Ali Alhamdi is a player who I've made a fair few videos on recently, um, especially since the course of the last transfer window. I made one a couple of weeks ago as well. He's a player who's not necessarily getting the game time that he probably desires at Ipswich Town right now. And it all comes at the fault of another former Derby Academy product in Liam Delap, absolutely hitting some bonkers form in the Premier League at the moment. And I think that opens the door for Alhamdi to go out on loan and potentially uh, test himself a bit more in the Championship, get himself some more games beyond his belt. Now, if you haven't checked out my previous video on Alhamdi, I'll make sure it's linked uh, in this video as well. But he's a 22-year-old centre forward. Plays for Ipswich. His contract does expire in 2028. So any potential deal for Alhamdi, in my opinion, would be a loan deal. Uh, if we could get him on a permanent, that would be absolutely amazing. But given our current financial circumstances, I cannot see that being the case. But I do believe he would offer a lot more than the likes of James Collins and Connor Washington. Obviously, I think he'd offer more than Dejon Brown. Dejon Brown is still a young player. He's got a long way to go and he needs to be given that experience. But is he going to get it this season? That's a big question. Now, on to the next one. It's a player who some of you might not know. It's a Stoke City youngster called Emre Tejel. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. You can correct me down in the comments. He's 19 years old and his contract does expire this summer. Now... When I spent time at Derby County Academy as an analyst, he was a name who popped up quite a lot. I'm not saying that Derby County were ever looking at him in terms of trying to sign him or anything, but there was a few people who I believe came from the Stoke Academy to work uh, during that season. And he's a player who seemed to get an, an abundance of praise. And he's, I believe he's made his first team debut or made a few first team appearances now. I do believe there is Premier League interest. So it's obviously a very unlikely signing, but it's one which I think could be really, really good for Derby County to secure that future number nine position. Now, obviously, if you look at the players we've got right now, uh, Dejon Brown, James Collins, Connor Washington and Jerry Yates. Obviously, Jerry Yates will head back to Swansea in the summer. Collins and Washington out of contract in the summer, so hopefully they'll be moved on, if not moved on in January. And obviously, Dejon Brown is still coming into his own. A little bit similar to the position that Tez Shell finds himself in at Stoke City. Now, there is a potential that... Uh, he could sign a new contract at Stoke. He could go and move elsewhere. Uh, but I think this would be a really good opportunity for Derby County to bring in some young talent. If you have not done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and turn on that notification bell to stay tuned for all of my latest Derby County and gaming content on this channel. Obviously, make sure you check out Kitbag down in the description. There's obviously a lot going on over there when it comes to sales. You can pick up Derby County kits on massive sales at the moment. So make sure you go and check that out. And I'll catch you in the next part of this video get them in the first team and get them playing and see what we can do with that now obviously the most recent form means that Derby County probably won't be testing out youngsters anytime soon but it'd be a great opportunity for Derby County to bolster that squad that they have and finally then Emil Rees Jakobsen a player who some Derby County fans will probably know really really well a former uh, Derby County Academy graduate moved away I believe it was the season before we went into administration Maybe the season before that, um, 
there's a few players who moved on that season who were from a similar area as Emil Rees Jakobsen and um, unfortunately never really got a proper first team opportunity for Derby but moved back to his hometown, uh, played uh, back in Europe and then found himself back over at Preston North End where in my opinion he's had some really really good seasons. Obviously this season probably not to the level that the likes of Preston North End and Jakobsen himself probably want but there's definitely uh, an opportunity for him, especially to move forward. With the age of 26, he could come back to Derby County under Paul Warren. I think he'd offer that sort of target man presence um, and sort of give us a bit more height in that forward line. Because I th do think that's what we're missing with Jerry Yates, is I think he needs another taller striker to go with him. Now, obviously, contract expiring this summer, um, and I think this would be a massive deal for Derby County. I think it would be... Uh, one which would potentially, not, I'm not saying that he's like James Collins or plays like James Collins, but would be a James Collins replacement in the sense of what he's probably asked to do. Now, Derby County have probably got a million different options for strikers when it comes to bringing players in. And these are just three on my wish list. I've gone through uh, transfer market, looked at some players. Obviously, Al Hamidi was one in my mind already. Tejo is a player who popped up in the contract expiring list. Uh, and Emma Ree Shackleton, another one who popped up in the expiring list as well. So it's going to be very interesting to see what Derby County do. These are three players on my wish list. Let me know who you'd like Derby County to sign it down in the comments. Now, obviously, Derby County won't go out and sign all three of these strikers. Derby may not even pick up a striker in the January transfer window. But, in my opinion, it's good to look at what potential options are out there. And especially with uh, two of the three players on this list with their contracts expiring in the summer, it opens up the door for Derby County to look further ahead as well. Obviously, they can't agree contracts with anyone uh, playing for a British team until, I believe it's the third week of May or something like that. Uh, but it's one of those where I think it certainly opens the door for conversations to be started. You can start pressing on these conversations now for potential January deals. And if that player isn't going to sign a contract extension, you can sort of have those conversations throughout January about contracts, terms, would they fit in with the budgets and things like that. You can have that. And if it doesn't work out with uh, a potential low risk fee uh, with the other club, then I think it's a perfect opportunity for Derby County. So Realistically, will Derby County sign any of these threatly players on the list? Probably not, but I think it's important to look at what is available. And these are three players who I've picked up who I think could be available this January, potentially even in the summer. Now, obviously, you lot will all have your own opinions on who you think that Derby County should sign in the summer or even in this January window. So I'm really intrigued for you guys to let me know down in the comments. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Turn on that notification bell. Obviously, Kitbag's got a whole ton of sales going on. So make sure you check out that down in the description. And yeah, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I'll catch you in the next one.